All right, well, it's another edition of Frank Walks, and uh, this time we're walking with an all pro running back, Saquon Barkley of the New York Giants. And we're standing here on Saquon Barkley's front porch here in beautiful Bergen County, New Jersey. Let's see what uh, Saquon has to say. And I brought Stu along today. Honored, grateful, blessed. And it's going to be one hell of an episode. So let's meet Saquon and go for a big walk. And we're looking for the fifth month in a row for a weight loss on the scale. Fifth month in a row for a weight loss, ready to lose, ready to lose the one and only living legend, Frank the Tank. Ready to lose, that sounds like the Mets. True. True. Let's go. Moment of truth. Here we go. Progress is pro yeah, exactly. It's progress. This is the hardest thing in the world. And listen, since I know you, the minute you get to a, a low level, you shoot up another 50. So this is phenomenal. <laughs> Very impressive. Very impressive. When's the last time you were in the 330s? Um, it's had, it has to be at least 20 years. That's 100, 100, 154 straight days? That's yes. It's that's a, listen, I love that. Especially people who set challenge, like set goals and challenge themselves. It's easy to say you're going to commit to something, but then when you actually do it, it's like what they say, after 30 days, you become a habit, habit or you break a habit. And then from there, I mean, you're 154. All right. You haven't been 330 pounds in 20 years. I mean, so much beauty in that. That is, it yeah. is, it, it's, I'm just looking forward to spring weather. I just, yeah. winter's, winter's wearing, wearing me down a little bit. Yeah, sure. We got a little grind here today. The weather's not, I'm, it's just more muggy outside, right? Right. Yeah. It's, 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 easy, it's an easy walk, so. Right. We'll good. good. Let's do it. Okay. And, uh. I just want to give you a hug before you give me this gift. <laughs> I love thanks, you. Thanks, Stu. I uh, love you. And, uh, thanks for uh, walking with me. And, uh, course, here's man. a little, uh, thanks present. Thanks so much. Uh, appreciation. Sure. Oh. <laughs> Kiss me. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I'm a, oh. Next time I work out, it's gonna be my workout shirt. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say, I'm <laughs> Let's see what we got here. Never go wrong with a little wine, right? There we go. A little cab. I appreciate that. It's gonna be go perfect with a little dinner. Thank you, boss. Well, thank you. Sure. Thanks. Seriously. Thanks for doing this. Let's do it. I mean, 154 days. You know how hard that is? Yeah. Like to commit, like, it's hard to do something consistently for 30 days. But, oh, can't eat that. Yeah, I don't know. My, my son, he tried, he tried to eat it. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, daddy gonna go on a walk, okay? Daddy be back, all right? Uh, a lot of you, a lot of people know where I live. I've only had, ever had like one crazy situation. It wasn't even a crazy situation. It was just like my, my house got put on social media um, for like Halloween and stuff like that. Uh, I, I would get like my first Halloween, I had like literally probably not even kidding like 300 kids and and <laughs> families right there when i the first time i moved and um but yeah we get a lot of some people knock on the door um uh, after pictures uh you know give me some stuff i just try to be nice to everyone uh, <laughs> treat everyone with respect you know uh, i may not be the same level as you but about maybe two months ago I'm sitting in my apartment and all I hear is, Frank, Frank, I heard you live out here. <laughs> that happened last year. Uh, obviously my whole, you know, contract situation, it was like a hot topic, I guess. Um, and I remember, this is a video I was talking about that ended up being on social media. It was at night and I remember like being in my room and I heard someone yell and I'm like, did someone yell? 
sign the deal and then like <laughs> all, all, I, all did a week later i see on tiktok and it's the same situation some some kids were like, driving by I'm just screaming at my house saying saquon sign the deal and like that's like oh i was uh, i was actually quietly hoping you went to the dolphins last year <laughs> <laughs> we talked about that in um uh at uh, the Knicks game right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Dolph, I think Dolphins got a good one. Oh, I like, I like, I, I like, I like A-Chan. I, I, like, I, like I got two really good ones. I like A-Chan. But, yeah. I wish, I just wish the injuries didn't hit them. The damn injuries that Football, hit them at the end man. of the year. Football's tough. It's, oh. that's a, it's, you know, they say it's, it's not if you get hurt in football, it's when you get you hurt. You know, I, 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 I appreciate more games in the NFL, but I don't know, I still don't understand why we had, why that 17th week was at it. Yeah. Um, you know. Uh, they, they like making money. Yeah, <laughs> Just put it like that. You know, I was I was thinking the end now. To, to see if this idea sounds good to you. That the, the, the I think the league should add a second bye week. Okay. And then so you for I I don't think they're going to go back to a sixteen week schedule, which was always the perfect schedule. But I say we play nineteen weeks, and that each team has two bye weeks. I mean, as an athlete uh, and a player in the NFL. You know, another week of recovery definitely wouldn't hurt. Um, I think that pushes some things back. That'll make the Super Bowl a week a week later. And you know, you know what? It will work out. Is that will make the Super Bowl President's Day weekend. Okay. So that Monday would be off, and that's that what Monday they're striving be. for. Correct. Oh, okay. So that yeah. everyone after the Super Bowl just doesn't go to work anyway. It is yeah, the right. uh, largest sick day in America. Is the day after Super Bowl. Wow, you guys really put some thought in it. I never, I've, I've never thought about it that way. I mean, looking from like from my point of view, another week where you can get to recover uh, and a little more time to spend with your family and friends. Yeah, I don't think I don't think it would hurt. Yeah, I, I, I don't think so. I mean, I, for, for example, I I don't like Thursday night football. I can't imagine as a player that that Sunday to Thursday turnaround is helpful. It's tough because like the fan, like the fan of me, and growing up, like Thursday night football is like super fun like it's it's something that you want to be a part of there's so many iconic games whether it's thursday night whether it's monday night sunday night all those prime time games is something you want to be a part of um but it is a quick it's a quick flip you know especially if you play on sunday and in my position being a running back you you might have 20 to 25 to 30 touches that sunday then you got to flip over and, and get ready for a thursday night game the beauty of it though is you get that rest in the yeah, back end. Yeah, that does help. That you get does that rest help. in the back end. And I feel like, me personally, it helps me for that next week. So I, I, I like it. I mean, I know a lot of people feel indifferent about it, but I, I kind of like it. Now, when you. Let's go this way. When this you do Thursday Night Football, and, you, and uh, do you have to, like, do some, like, workout, like, uh, going into the Sunday game, like, have some stuff prepared for Thursday, or is it just, just say, just like, sprint to Thursday? No. So you know, like, that. You know, going into that Sunday night, that Sunday game, uh, Thursday, it's coming around quick. So we just treat our Monday and our Tuesday and our Wednesday different. Um, you'll come in, you'll watch film on Monday, which you would do uh, anyway, and get a lift. That Tuesday becomes more, and that Monday you add a walk, like a walkthrough. And then that Tuesday is more of a walkthrough day. And then you travel, or if it's a home game, you go to the hotel, and then Thursday, boom, right there. I mean, I, I see football as like I just do just a grind. Yeah. It, it is. It's just how many, just 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 I, I just happened in Miami this year. It's it's just like, mm-hmm. it was like at the end of the season. It was just like every every every. I mean seven. I think they had like seven defensive starters out the last three weeks of the mm-hmm. season. Yeah, it's just you know, you you tend to see the the teams that have the most success throughout the season are the ones who can stay the healthiest. And that was a big, uh, a big change within our, um, Someone's coming? Yeah. It was a big change within our, with the Giants last year, from the year prior, you know, we went made to the playoffs. We were relatively healthy. Um, we were able to stay on the field. Uh, when you have all your guys, your core guys, um, you know, you can make things happen. And this year, uh, the Giants were just banged up with injury from the start, you know, our, our tackle, Hurt his uh, hamstring early in the year. I hurt my ankle second game. You know, DJ ended up tearing his ATL. Um, it's tough, but it's the, the mentality of the NFL that you have to have is the next man up mentality. Uh, and you just got to find a ways to, to, 
to continue to improve and continue to give yourself a fighting chance uh, throughout the year. I mean, uh, one of the, uh, the worst off injuries for the Dolphins this year was uh, Jalen Phillips and... Then they had the hard knocks, and he was mic'd up when it happened, yeah. too. He did, that in, was, he did in MetLife, too, right? Yeah. It was Achilles? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, the, the, the surface there, I look at the stat, that like uh, 20 non-contact ACL Achilles injuries yeah. in like four years. Yeah, I mean, me personally, I, I, I've heard that stat before, and you know, there's a lot of people who complain uh, about the turf. Uh, I know... Uh, the owners and everyone uh, did the best they can to get a new surface uh, this year. So the field was different than a year prior. But luckily, I mean, in my career, I haven't got any lower body injuries on that turf. Um, all my stuff has came away. Uh, but yeah, you know, me personally, I like grass. I played in grass and at Penn State. Um, you know, I, someone, I remember so, I saw a tweet like my yards per carry or you know, whatever it is, is actually higher on grass than it is on turf. Um, and just how I feel the next day, that Monday, that Tuesday, yeah. after playing, like say if we go to Philly or we go to Washington, rather than playing home or going to Dallas, uh, you definitely feel a difference. Now um, there's one team that has like, it's a, it's a NFL only stadium. They, don't even, they rarely even have like college games at this stadium. I'm talking about Lambeau Field. I've never and, played there. I've heard a lot of great things. I've and never played there. Just watching games here, mm -hmm. even in the the worst winter weather, the grass the grass at Lambeau Field always looks pristine. Yeah. No matter what time of the season it is. Yeah. And I've, it's it's how they treat it. How they 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 have like a water system underneath it, water pumps mm -hmm. underneath it. Why can't every team in the NFL duplicate what the Packers do? Uh, that's a great question. Um, I think you look at some teams that have grass, uh, for example, Steelers, for example, Philly, like you said, they have colleges play there, Temple plays there first. Temple, game. Pittsburgh. And then you got Pitt that plays. Um, with New York, uh, New York is such a, you know, it's New York City. A lot of people come in here to met life and to perform. And uh, I went to the, the uh, Rangers, Devils, uh, Islanders game. Um, I think a week or two ago. Yeah, well, I went and, to the Devils Flyers game. That was <laughs> much funner. <laughs> yeah, but they, it's you have a lot of a lot of things that come out come through that stadium. So yeah, kind of doesn't. I mean, I guess in a sense, makes sense for MetLife to be grass. I know it was uh, prior, um, but it's hard, you know. Yeah, and I think it should be simple. It should be simple. You know, if they're able to do it in Green Bay and and Lambeau Field and every year, it's I know. Uh, like that, they I know next year Notre Dame's gonna. Uh, a game scheduled at MetLife. Really? Yeah, they're, they're playing, playing Navy. Navy. Oh, that should be a fun one. That should be a fun one. They're playing uh, no Navy at Notre Dame at uh, MetLife. Yeah, that should be a. I've actually. Has there been any? When's the last college game? I think Penn State played Syracuse. Oh, that bowl game, right? The Pinstripe Bowl. Uh, the no, let's play that. The Pinstripe Bowl to play Yankee Stadium. Yeah, Yankee Stadium. Oh, Yankee Stadium. Uh, oh. Penn State, the year before I got to Penn State, or two years before I got to Hackenberg, freshman year, they played the Pinstripe Bowl. But I think uh, within that same year, I think they played Syracuse and MetLife Stadium. I know that. I, I only think that because I played uh, NCAA 14 sometimes when I get bored. Uh, and I go to my dynasty mode or I go to Road to Glory. And we saw, we saw I go to Penn State. Yeah, phenomenal. and I go to. I play at Penn State, and the first game room. is Syracuse, and I, I believe it was at MetLife. So hopefully. Hopefully I'm... Well, you're coming out with NCAA 25 this year. Yes. You can uh, get uh, back into the action I here. hope that... I, I See, I've never got to be in a college a game. Um, back in the days, you used to, like, you know, there would be these these guys who are really good at creating rosters, and you could download uh, yourself, uh, and you could download your whole roster, your, your class. But I hope, like, that they have, like, some legacy play like where they have like some of the, the top guys from like lsu or penn ah. state and uh i hope i think i don't know i, I hope i'll make that list uh but that'll be fun well, if i can if i can well you could be the same you know, backfield as franco harris come on man look at that <laughs> I, I don't see any team you know if you got me franco uh in the backfield i think that's a hard team to stop in in the, in the college football game Ah. Did you love going to Penn State? Loved everything about it. It was it was truly 
So I was originally committed to Rutgers. Um, when I, that was, Rutgers was my first scholarship that I ever got. Uh, they kind of offered me off a JV football film. Um, so, you know, when they offered me, I was just, in my mind, I'm like, I just got a Division One offer and I never even started <laughs> at running back yet in varsity. So I committed, I got to go to a Penn State Michigan game. It was when like Hack was there, Allen Robinson was there. They beat Michigan in like a three or four overtime game thriller. It was a whiteout. It was like my first experience. And I was like, wow, this place is truly amazing. I, I didn't decommit yet. When Coach Franklin came, I ended up committing uh, with Franklin and going there. But the memories, the moments that I've had at Penn State, like, it's so special. And anytime, like, I meet anybody that go to Penn State, we all say the same thing. You feel like, you, you know, when you talk like, oh, you're biased. But I played in, you know, Michigan. I played in Ohio State. And no disrespect to those guys. Like, they have great places too. But there's nothing like a whiteout in Beaver in, in, in Beaver and State College. It's, it's, it's words came and describe it. Yeah, because we're from, we graduated from the high school. And in, I think, 1975, uh, Joe Paterno came to Farmington High School to okay. recruit Joe DeAnge, okay. which was, uh, he was our quarterback at the time, and we were ranked, you know, number one in the state, and um, he became a defensive back, uh, safety, I think, for Penn State, and then mm -hmm. also he came in 1980 when Ronnie Heller graduated from Farmington High School, and then he recruited him. He was a lineman to play uh, at Penn State, and then Ronnie became a pro. He played for Tampa Bay, played for Miami, mm -hmm. and then played for the Philadelphia Eagles, and he was on the um, team uh, with, uh, in 1990, where they had uh, Reggie White, and they had okay. Seth Joyner, they had that mm -hmm. big defense, Randall Cunningham was the quarterback. Did you play ball? Uh, I was a, I was a, I peaked in seventh grade and I was yeah. phenomenal in seventh grade. <laughs> At every sport, I could play against eighth, ninth, tenth graders, but uh, I stopped growing in seventh grade yeah. and it ended right there. I would assume because you know the, I saw it on Twitter or X now. Our side by side, my naked body shoot. We look just like we each look other. Look great. We look great. We look great. We look great. I was, I seen the figure, so I would assume you know you had uh, some high school accolades or you know uh, played at a high level somewhere. <laughs> my claim to fame is I ran the New York City Marathon in 2017. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I only had three months, three weeks training. I went from 220 wow. to 174. And I ran it in four hours, 39 minutes, How 24 about seconds. How about that? 1040 mile, never broke, never pushed the entire time. And I, a Tiki Barber beat me by a minute and 15 seconds. So it was like, I gotta give Tiki, like, I gotta give Tiki some stuff about that. Absolutely. Yeah. It was like so funny. So that was, uh, <laughs> that was a, my claim to fame as an athlete. Three months? Yeah, three months, three weeks. That's all wow. I trained. My over under that people bet on was seven hours, seven hours. You it crushed was gonna it. take me. Or I wasn't going to be able to do it. Yeah, crush but it. I just, you know, but as you know, as an athlete, as Frank knows, when he's going after a goal, go after your dreams. Mm -hmm. When you're laser focused, yep. and you would rather literally die if you're not going to succeed, you succeed. Right. There is no excuse. Mm -hmm. There, you know, like as you know, as being one of the greatest running backs in the NFL right now. There is no, you know, there's no excuses. Just like Frank is number one right now, probably social media in the world. Um, there's no excuses, right, Frank? Yeah, it's it's, it's, it's you just got to put up. You got to keep continuing to turn out content. That's what I've been doing. You know, sometimes you're gonna miss. Sometimes you're gonna hit. Yeah. You never know. It's uh, uh it, it's the hesitation that causes things. What makes you think of a what, like what causes a miss or a hit in your opinion? Ah, uh, it's just something. Yeah, what it is is it's, it's a lot of it is luck, and a lot of it is just find some, something that the audience likes yeah and uh, sometimes it just doesn't work I mean some of my failures have been the most uh, iconic moments on the internet like uh, my rib video all right this has been cooking now about 45 minutes so we're gonna put these potatoes and this corner grill I don't like that it's charred up what the fuck I put ribs on the uh, barbecue. I didn't monitor, uh, monitor the temperature. It turns out the um, the heat was up to about a thousand degrees, uh, at, <laughs> at least a thousand degrees. That's as that's as far as the temperature gauge went. I didn't look at them for forty five minutes, and then it was ash. Yeah.
How about that? <laughs> it looked yeah. like uh, it looked like uh, Uncle Owen and Aunt Beru from Star Wars. <laughs> when I do my run, when I run like a mile or something like that, like from my house to the stop sign and back is like a exact mile. So sometimes I'll do that for conditioning. The the other thing I was gonna ask you, um, the Giants' expectations. As far as I was concerned, I think the whole NFC was, and the world was concerned, was you guys were going to go deep into the playoffs this year. And as you said, you were derailed, really not by anything, but injuries. I mean, it was just, it was just mind blowing, and it was one after another, after another, after another. Yeah. To key positions, to just whatever could go wrong did. So how were you able to stay focused and keep your mind in the game knowing you weren't going to go to the Super Bowl, you probably were not going to make the playoffs, but you still have seven, eight games in front of you here. The coach is getting torched in the media. He's getting destroyed. Your offense and defense coordinators are getting destroyed. The players are being picked apart where that wasn't really the story. And as a diehard giant fan my whole life, mm. my father's the biggest diehard fan, it just killed us. So how mentally are you able to overcome that? Yeah, I'll answer that question in two ways. One, you know, from the individual side and then from the team. But I think that's a great question. From the individual side, it was tough uh, because, you know, not being able to get a deal done with the team, uh, and playing on a one-year deal, uh, you know you have no security after that, that and coming back from a oh. high ankle sprain, and um, especially when the season's not going the way that, that you would like it to go. Uh, you have all those, those thoughts creep into your head, but at the end of the day, no one cares. You know what I mean? No one cares. Uh, you, you have a job to do. You, you're in the National Football League. Um, even though you're not having a winning record, even though you know the deal didn't go the way you wanted to go, injuries and this and that and the third, like just something that I dreamed about doing since I was a little kid. Uh, like you said, the same thing you the same thing you said about the marathon, the same thing the, the mindset he has with the walk. Uh, you put your all into it. And I, there's gonna be a day you're not playing football no more. There's gonna be a day this game's taken away from me. So you you got to give your all no matter what. The scenario is, um, and then on the team side, you got to get credit to the team because I've been in situations where you know people fold and you point fingers and you blame each other. But our team is so close, and you know we're all such good friends and we all care about each other that we were able to all stay together and we we were able to make a run. We had a little you know a little a little time where we had Tommy come in and uh, Tommy you know, DeVito, yeah, Tommy DeVito, <laughs> guy, uh, he came in and. Uh, we won three games, and before you knew it, we were in the playoff. We were in the playoff picture again. Uh, we lost to the Saints, and it kind of knocked us out. But that was my mindset, and that was a team mindset. It's like until we are out this thing completely, we are fighting, we are grinding, we are pushing for each other, uh, because you never know. And we just had belief in each other. The season didn't go the way you wanted to go, but that was the reason why we were successful the year before. We were able to stay healthier and win closer games. And going on, I think in any team for. In the NFL, you got to have faith, you got to believe in each other, have confidence in each other, and no matter what, back against the wall, ups, downs, continue to fight for each other. Now, if I ever get Tommy DeVito to walk with me, yeah. he'd had, I'd had, I make it a point, he has to come to my neighborhood because I live on a street yeah. that is actually named Tommy DeVito Way. It's okay. named uh, in honor of the guy from the Jersey Boys. Okay. But there's street signs that actually say Tommy DeVito Way. I think we gotta make that happen. Down my street. I think I know someone who knows Tommy. <laughs> I, think we can, I think we can make that one happen. All right, it'll be wild just to walk up and down my street. Hey, look, Tommy DeVito Way. I wonder if he even knows that there's a street named after you know, hey. his name. I mean, that's pretty dope. Yeah, it's, 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 it's from the guy from the Four Seasons, the yeah. Jersey Boys. Mm -hmm. He lived on that street, so they named the street after it. How about that? It's like a secondary name on the street. It's, it's Belmont Avenue, but. It's Tommy DeVito way in his honor. Okay. And then also, I know that um, Frank gives a lot away, not only his time, uh, but his money, and any charitable event that Frank... Yeah, we're going to uh, be getting involved in that a lot. ...wants yeah. to help tremendously, and I know you have a charity yourself, yeah. uh, that we're going to do whatever you need us to do. Thank you. Whether it's give money, whether it's to promote, 
whether it's to go to events, you know, obviously for free, forever, anything you want, yeah. Frank's available for you. So could you talk a couple of seconds about your charity? Yeah, and I was saying, uh, I would say the same rice words to you guys. If you guys ever need anything, uh, I'll be down and willing to help. My foundation is called the Saquon and Michael Land Hope Foundation. And, you know, a lot of people have one specific thing that they focus on, uh, you know, whether it's breast cancer or uh, whether it's, you know, homelessness, whether it's, we kind of do it all. Uh, that's something that me, my mom, my dad, Alberta, uh, we really focus on. It's really more focused on the, in the youth uh, because I, I'm a real big believer in, in that the youth is our future. Um, so really trying to make an impact on them and just whatever we can do, whether it's homeless, whether it's, you know, we work with so many, we work with so many organizations throughout the year. I've been blessed to be uh, a Walter Payton man in the year nominee uh, twice uh, you know and coming close to winning both times uh, but that's what I really believe in I stand for giving back to my community because this football thing is cool the fame thing is cool but the thing that's going to last a long time is the, the memories and the moments you're able to create for other people uh, the way you're able to impact your community and you know that's something that I want to continue to do and um, going to continue to get better at too beautiful because I know it's one thing about Frank Frank is very humble he does not like to brag about himself similar to you you're very humble you're very you know giving you you let us into your house you're doing this right now you don't need to do this right now but you are and similar to frank where he wants to give back he's not in this for the money he's not even in this for the fame and fortune he's very grateful his plight in life right now his dream was always to work for barstool always to excel He's one of the most brilliant people in the world. People don't know that. Cannot beat him in trivia. You know, he has, you know, <laughs> uh, the immaculate grid. He owns it. Literally yeah, owns yeah it. I got his, I got his uh, six, six today. I got a six score in baseball. I always do, like, really good on the baseball scores if it's if it's teed up for me just right. They had Mets on the grid. So if there's ever Mets on the grid, yeah. I'm going to, like, uh, excel. Is the T score the that game where there's, like... Nine boxes. Nine boxes and, yeah. Yeah. Darren, uh, one of my teammates, Darren. Uh, he, he he plays that game, and it's uh, low, the the lower your score, the better. Yeah, but going uh, back to your point, like with being humble, it's not trying to get too religious. You gotta understand, like you know, I believe in high power, and I believe that you know everything happens for a reason, and you know we were put in these positions for a reason. So it's our it's up to us. It's our responsibility to use the impact that we were able to have and use this, the stuff that we would be able to create to make an impact on others. Um, because like I said, you know, this, this is cool and all, but it's not forever. And it's the it's things you're able to do for people that's going to last a way longer time. Yeah, like I said, it, it actually started when we went to Notre Dame. We had to walk uh, a long way to the uh, stadium from where we parked. And then we started just saying, hey, why don't we do this more often? And it was just supposed to be something that started just like uh, a couple times a week. But as we strung days together, we realized the streak was going. And then it's been 154 straight days now. Wow. And uh, I've dropped uh, more than 40 pounds. And I've gotten some uh, good messages. Like, guy said that he uh, started walking with me. And uh, it's helped his uh, overcome some heart issues. And wow. that some other people are getting inspired and losing weight. It's been quite nice. And uh, uh, one of the things I did, it was an ALS walk uh, with uh, actually umpire Phil Cuzzy. Okay. Uh, and uh, I want to try to do more charitable walks when they're available. That's one thing I like to do. I mean, 154 is insane. Like, I was saying in the house, like, to be able to commit to something, and do it on a consistent basis, like day after day after day. It's hard. And there's been tough days. Yeah, I mean, right now. Weather days. The hardest part, this is my hardest part of my run. When I run, you can tell we're going a little uphill. Uh, but like you said, you were telling me high, you were on highways, 100 degree weather. It's, I mean, I really, nothing but respect. Yeah, nothing five months respect. ago, I probably couldn't do this hill. Mm. I probably couldn't do this hill five months ago. And you said you lost 40 pounds? Yep. And it's the first time you've been in the <laughs> yeah. early 30s since you, for 20 years? Well, at least 20 years. At least. It's beauty in that, man. 
it's inspiring, it challenges other people. You got people walking with you, making an impact <laughs> in their life. And, and you would think it's something so simple as a walk, but it goes such, it goes such a long way. I'm more like, the, like I said inside, like the weight is impressive, but to, to commit to something. Like I remember one time, like for me, it's like, all right, I would do something during the season where I'd be like, all right, I'm not gonna do red meat this season. And then like a week, two later, you're like, all right, it's easy. Then you're at the steakhouse, <laughs> you're at Mastro's or something like that. You take you one day off, you can't. at least the two days, then three exactly. days. Exactly, exactly. You gotta stay locked in, you gotta stay committed. Um, I mean, I walked one day with 102 fever. Wow. That was a tough day. Mm -hmm. And then there's been just the bad weather days. Yeah. What's your worst conditioning? It was 100, the 102 or the, the weather and the highway or the fever? The highway was scary because yeah. those trucks got pretty close too. Mm -hmm. The dark woods? Yeah, the dark woods. Explain that one. Yeah, yeah we, were, we couldn't find a place to walk coming back from Chicago. The first place we stopped was next to a shooting range. So uh, I did not want to be walking in the woods behind a shooting range. Smart. <laughs> What's your favorite place to walk? I mean, don't get me wrong, we're in a beautiful neighborhood in New Jersey, but uh, I, I could assume there's probably some other. The weather was kind of cruddy, at least for the, the second half of it, mm -hmm. but walking alongside the Grand Canyon. Okay. Wow. All right, what's one spot that you haven't walked yet that you want to walk? Huh. Well, there's more than one spot, but I can tell you one good spot would be uh, uh, overlooking Mount Rushmore would be a great one. Okay. Uh, uh, let me see. I did the uh, Vegas Strip. You want to talk about dichotomy? I did the walk along the Grand Canyon one morning. And the next night, I walked the Vegas Strip. I mean, both majestic yeah. in equal ways, <laughs> but so diametrically opposed. <laughs> totally opposite. You couldn't get more different. I've done, I did a Brooklyn Bridge, I like that one too. Uh -huh. That was another fun one. In the pouring rain. Pouring so, rain. so soaking that my clothes literally were here to wring them out. Yeah. When we finished, it was just pouring rain. Had uh, like ten times heavier than this. Yeah, you're big into sports, right? Yeah. So we just talked about Mount Rushmore. Give me your four Mount Rushmore athletes, not just one sport, just athletes, all time. Uh, Babe Ruth, Michael Jordan, Jim Brown. Jim Brown. And uh, let me see, Roof. Jordan, Jim Brown. One more. Uh, Jim Thorpe. Who you got? Wow. Put you on the spot there, huh? Four greatest athletes. As far as athletic or as far as just talent? Achievements. I'll say more achievements. Because talented, you know what I mean? Like, football's my favorite sport, so okay. I'm going to go football. Lawrence Taylor, Joe Montana, Jerry Rice, George Blanda. No Tom Brady. <laughs> no, I hate Tom Brady. <laughs> because he beat me every time. <laughs> Except the Giants beat him twice, but he was just in my business. I go against the grain, I go against the public, I go yeah. against the favorites. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, Tom Brady came up huge every time, so he's literally cost me millions of dollars. So I would. I never think that's a fair. I think I that's a fair him reason in my why. Top yeah. You know, I love him as a human being. Great guy, great husband. Up until he got divorced, but still, in my book, he's a great husband, great father. He gives away a ton of his money. He's a competitor. Yeah. He's the ultimate competitor. But it's similar to like I hate Michael Jordan mm -hmm. with a, a passion because I spent about $2 million on New York Nick tickets from 1991 mm -hmm. through 95 when Pat Riley was there. And all I ever saw was Michael Jordan break my heart. Yeah. Like literally break my heart. Yeah. You know my what I like about Jim same. Brown? His football wasn't his best sport. Lacrosse? Lacrosse. Lacrosse was, yeah. And uh, 
Uh, if I'm not mistaken, Jim Brown actually had the same birthday as uh, Michael Jordan. So Michael Jordan's birthday just passed, right? Yep, February, February 17th. February 17th. If I'm not mistaken, Michael, uh, Jim Brown's birthday was also February 17th. I don't know why I remember that. It's kind of like I remember uh, two other goats. Uh, Willie Mays and Martin Brodeur share a birthday. What's that date? Uh, May 6th. All right, thanks. Thanks once again for Saquon. And uh, not that we're cheap or anything, but we were going into wine store yesterday. And uh, the bottle of wine we saw was $26. <laughs> it was like... <laughs> it was like... Like, like, like the clouds aligned. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love that. One, I would say thank you guys so much uh, for allowing me to be a part of this journey. I got nothing but respect. Um, you know, I admire your commitment. Uh, I admire the goal that you're setting, the way you're inspiring others. Um, you know, like I said, hats off to you guys for sure. Well, thanks. And uh, uh, do you have any more information about your foundation? Yeah, Michael Land, Saquon Barkley, Hope Foundation. Um, yeah, we're just trying to make a change, trying to make an impact, do, do what we can in our community. Uh, we've had a lot of help, you know, more help is always welcome too. Uh, and like I said, just want to challenge everyone to try to make an impact in your community. Uh, the little things go a long way. Well, thanks. Thanks for coming on. Thank you uh, for supporting my walks. Oh my God, sure. God bless. Appreciate you guys.